Hey, what's up guys, Boba Rail here, and today I'm going to be talking about how to pick what Gundam main in Vigor. If you don't know what I mean when I say this, then you should probably stick around to learn it because it's a pretty valuable concept. So what does it mean to main a gun? Well, it's picking something that you can run in nearly every encounter. This concept has its own respected advantages and disadvantages, but personally, it's something I do on a regular basis, and I find myself sticking to one gun for the most part for usually about one half to one full season in Vigor. The advantage to doing this is pretty simple, and it lies in the same connections that make muscle memories or repeated actions more easy with practice. What does that actually mean in terms of vigor? Well, let's say little Timmy decides to main an A74K. He goes into an encounter and gets into a firefight where he kills one person at approximately 50 meters. This individual firefight will develop his comfortability with that weapon because, to get very technical with this very fast, when hunting for kills in any game, your brain associates the actions of landing shots with the dopamine response that follows when you kill and loot who you were shooting at. The positive reinforcement of this sequence encourages you to refine your recoil control and accuracy on a micro scale to land more shots and perform better in your next firefight. So when Timmy gets into his next encounter using an A74K, even if he doesn't know it, he is subconsciously applying all of the information from his last firefights to quickly assess the lead and recoil, and as a result, he hits more shots because of his past experiences. That's a very long way of saying practice makes perfect, and when you stick with one gun, you'll get more used to it. But I figured it was at least important to note the neurological benefits of repeatedly using the same gun in Vigor. The downside of maining a gun is that by sticking with one gun that you use for every game, you lose a lot of that per map versatility. For example, by choosing to main a Suomi, you would therefore be sacrificing any counter sniping capabilities, and would have to rely on positioning to get to your gun's effective range. That's enough for defining its pros and cons, now let's actually talk about how to pick your main. Finding a gun to main is a similar process to choosing a gun for an individual encounter. We're going to be applying those same four variables that we talked about in the last video. Although I should say your immediate playstyle is somewhat irrelevant when you're talking about this large of a scale. It still is something to keep in mind, but that's more so to be used to determine what end of your gun's effective range you choose to engage targets from while you're in an encounter, and have already selected your gun. But now let's talk about what matters the most with your overall playstyle. I touched on this a lot in the first one, but there's still some more to be said about analyzing it. When defining what kind of player you are in order to make a decisive choice, you should ask yourself some simple questions. Number one is what's your favorite gun? And number two is what's your favorite map? For some people, their favorite gun is the perfect weapon for them and it's as simple as that. But I would suggest putting a little bit more thought before jumping right into it. What your favorite map is and how you perform in a variety of encounters slash engagements can easily counteract your preference here, because you might really like the looks and feel of the MP5 and maybe even consider it to be your favorite gun, but if your favorite map in the game is say Felcanton and you're much more successful using long range rifles when actually playing encounters, then I would take that into consideration. But building a loadout to use as your main also needs to account for the third point of available resources, and this is honestly the biggest one. Try to go for guns that have a lower craft time so you can essentially be net even, i.e. a Suomi has a 15 minute craft time and an encounter length is roughly the same. So as long as you're surviving, you'll always be either neutral or positive in your inventory, with only the cost of building materials, which is kinda irrelevant and I'm gonna use this as a shameless plug for Chris's video on why materials don't matter from last week. If you don't have the plan for it, then you really shouldn't be using it, and unless you have massive stockpiles of purple or gold guns, I would suggest avoiding them entirely. And yes, I know and acknowledge the fact that a lot of players actually do have massive stockpiles of them, because I'm one of them. But I'm going to take this as an opportunity to say just because you have a lot of SG1s because they were duped to insanity and they were everywhere for like 5 straight updates, doesn't mean you should main the SG now. And the reason I call it out specifically is the amount of people I see trying to use them at less than 15 meters in third person is astonishing, because they are trying to clear buildings with a literal DMR. This isn't where the SG is most effective, and that sweet spot of 50 to 75 meters is really where you'll outperform 90% of other guns in the game. In CQC, a basic AK-74U or Suomi is going to have a faster TTK than you. 
So understand the guns that you're using and only use DMRs if you're comfortable with long ranges and only use SMGs if you're comfortable with close ranges. Do not mix the two categories. Although, you know, I guess you could say the same thing about the H-Bar and the H-Bar is pretty solid in CQB, but it's, uh, I don't know, dude. I, th I feel like it's so much better used at long ranges. That's more up in the air though because its TTK stat is actually pretty good. So you know what? If you wanted to use an H-Bar in CQC because I know a lot of you have stockpiles of them, then you could go ahead and do it and be pretty successful, but I would not suggest it. Sorry, I know that was a little bit of a rant, but let me rope it back in here. Last thing I need to talk about is the environmental aspect of teammates, and it's incredibly beneficial to coordinate what you're maining in order to complement who you're playing with. I find the one person using an AR and one person using a sniper build to be one of the most effective duos due to the long range versatility, but there's countless combinations of different guns and how they work and complement one another, depending on the playstyle of who's using each weapon, and this only goes further when you add a third person to the mix. To summarize everything, think about what guns you find appealing based on what gun is your favorite, and then how and where you perform the best overall in encounters. Consider how many of a certain gun you have and if it can be produced to counteract losses in the event of a losing streak. And then finally, talk to your teammates and find out what your weak points are as a team so you can use your weapon to make everybody you're playing with and yourself more effective in the Outlands. This video was supposed to be the last one on this topic, and I can make another one if you ask me in the comments, but I feel I've covered most of the information necessary to make a good decision here. If you still are having difficulty understanding this and want to use or apply this to your gameplay, then my main suggestion at this point would be to join our Discord, give me or another VSL member an at, and ask to talk about it with one of us directly. Otherwise, you can also ask me or Chris in the comments below. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.